Well, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Randy Scott with Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits this morning. Uh, kind of sunny outside today in Wilmington, Delaware, enjoying the, the sunshine. Uh, uh, just reminds me of the light of Jesus shining down on us. Uh, and the light of Jesus that should be shining out of us uh, into this lost and dying world. Uh, we always need to be a testimony. And this morning, you know, Lord's laid on my heart again. Uh, about pride for some reason. And, uh, you know, we do struggle with pride uh, in many, many ways. And what we got to understand what pride does, pride opens the door for the devil to come in and eat our lunch. And uh, we need to remember that. And, uh, you know, is there good pride? There probably is. Uh, but there's more probably bad pride than anything else. Okay. When it makes, when uh, pride makes everything all about you, me, myself, and I, uh, you might say that's a time where, where the devil gets in with those fiery darts and, and uh, those little seeds of deception start getting planted. And uh, then we start getting into trouble. And if we don't see those things, OK, uh, uh, happening in our lives, uh, you know, it creates more havoc uh, in our lives. So we've got to always be in the word of God and understand that he wants people to be humble. Humble yourselves before God. You know, humble yourselves under the man, mighty hand of God that he may, you know, lift you up in due time. And uh, we need to remember those things. Uh, you know, God loves humility. He loves a humble servant. He loves a servant that thinks of others more highly than they do themselves. But we don't want to give place to the devil uh, at all. And James talks about this, you know, uh, uh, this Wednesday, I'll be in chapter four, uh, for Wednesday night Bible study, uh, getting ready to wind this down. But, uh, uh, in verse seven, you know, how do we get rid of humility? Uh, I'm going to read verses seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I want you to listen very closely. Again, they're hard, they're strong verses, but sometimes we need the strong verses to encourage us. We really do. If the word of God isn't challenging to us, okay, to stand strong and to stand faithful, then we're not in it. We're not in it. There's no place you can read all of scripture and think, oh, easy believism. Uh, life's going to be easy. Life is going to hand you a bowl of cherries. It doesn't happen that way. If you take up your cross, guess what? It's going to be a tough journey, but it's going to be a good journey. And that's what I want you to understand. But let's read the word of God here uh, in verse seven. And, and it's a verse that, that's uh, very common and uh, used it uh, on Sunday. But we need reminders. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You have to resist, though. But you have to know what you're resisting. Pride is one of those things that we have to resist. The devil uses pride. When he can grab us and hook us to make us believe that we're that important, okay, that we're more important than anyone else and everybody else, then he's got us. Then he's got us. Let me read that again. Therefore, submit to God. When you submit to God, it means you're surrendering. You're giving all to God. Resist the devil and what? He will flee from you. That's an awesome feeling to have that kind of power. to Know that he has got to flee because the power of God is around you. Verse 8, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of God, or in the sight of the Lord, pardon me, and he will lift you up. Now, that previous verse sounds kind of tough. But if you follow it up with that verse 10, you humble yourself before God. Guess what? He will lift you you up. He will lift you up. And that's what you're looking for, to come into his presence in a humble way that he is lifting you up. Okay. Uh, we need to encourage one another. We need to exhort one another, but there's nothing like being in a place where God is lifting you up. You're in that right place. And then you become more discerning. And you know, like Satan, you tried to slip in on me, but that's not going to happen. You need to get out of here. You need to hit the road. In Jesus' name, you need to leave. And there's power in that. But, but the devil's going to know if that power in you is real. He's going to. And I don't know if you remember in Acts uh, where the Jewish exorcists, you know, uh, we they tried to get rid of the demons. But in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, they weren't ex uh, exercising in the power of the Lord. They were using the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, okay, who Paul had power with. And what did the demons do? The demons beat them up, beat them up and shamed them. 
embarrass them. That's not where God wants us to be in our walk with him. Okay, he wants us to rise up victorious. When we carry that cross, we pick up our cross and carry that cross. We need to do it in a humble way. We need to do it in a humble way. And it's not always going to be easy. But you know, when you're doing everything the way the Lord would have you to do it, the best of your ability, he's going to lift you up. And you're going to know that you're in the presence of God. What a great place to be. Humility, humility, humility. Submit to God, resist the devil. Anything that's contrary to the word of God is satanically driven. So know that. So when you start thinking like, well, this might be all right. When you, when you start thinking like that, this might be all right. This might be okay. That's when you know the devil's trying to slip in on you. Bind it, rebuke it, cast it off, get it away from you. Don't receive it. Don't accept it. And humble yourselves before the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you, Father, that we have you to come to. We have you to humble ourselves before, Lord, that you will lift us up, okay, in those times of need, that you will lift us up and be with us in those tough times, uh, those challenging times, Lord, especially when we're under spiritual attack. Father, we've got to remember it's not against flesh and blood. So when we're coming under attack, it may be coming from another human's mouth, but it's the satanic forces that's driving that person. So we need to come against those things that surround that person. And, Father, not receive them into our own lives. So, Father, help us to be humble. Help us to be humble, Father, that we, again, attract a lost and dying world to you, to the cross. And, Father, we come, we're coming close to celebrating Easter. Lord, we thank you for the time. That's the foundation of our faith. Father, that you died for us. You went to the grave, but you rose again on the third day for us. You defeated death in the grave for us. And the devil's not happy about that. He's not happy at all because you've given us a victory that he does not want us to have. So, Father, we praise you as we come before you this morning in a humble way, lifting up those that need you as Lord and Savior and lifting up those that need a better, stronger relationship with you as we face tough times that are coming our way. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to stand, that we're able to stand. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. All right, guys, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody this morning. And uh, uh, again, always hope that uh, the tidbits are speaking to your heart. I hope the Holy Spirit is moving in your life. And if there's somebody that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, that's what we're praying most of all, that they would come to know you today more than anything else. But don't stress, give God the mess. And he'll take care of the rest. Love you guys. We will see you in the morning at 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits. God bless.